What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a few different things that will help you become a starting wide receiver on your team. So I hope this video helps you guys out, I hope it could teach you a few new things, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you desperately need to improve your route running, and you want to get improve your route running quickly, check out that very first link in the description below for a 45 minute long video on how wide receivers can improve their route running in 10 days. It is a two week long schedule, five workouts a week with the exact drills, with sets and reps to improve your route running as fast as possible. So check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get started with this video. So the first thing that is going to help you be that starting receiver, it's going to make you stand out to your high school coach, college coach, whoever you're trying to impress is knowing how to close space with the DB and being able to restack. So let's play this full speed. So this wide receiver does a great release. Now the restack is a place that we need to work on, but we're going to show an example of a proper restack in a second, but I want to mainly focus on the release. So if I have to run a route here, let's talk about this. And again, having a high football IQ is super important to being that best receiver on your team. When you have inside shade like man coverage and you have to run a corner route, it is very tempting for wide receivers to do what? Just take off to the outside and just go run the corner. But that is exactly what this DB wants you to do. Linebacker, safety, whoever's playing, whoever's walked down playing man coverage. So he was, if you just take off and run to the outside, he's going to get hands right into your hip, force you and squeeze you to the sideline. So when you run that corner, you're not going to have any space for the QB to throw you open. So you have to have that football IQ. you got to know that I need to close the distance with him, threaten him to the inside to give me more space to the outside. Now, the whole reason he's inside shade is because he's trying to protect the inside. He will do whatever possible to not let you run a slant, a dig, a post. That's his sole purpose. So that's why we threaten him to the inside. Now, like I said in the beginning of this, closing space is what I want to focus on here. I want to focus on the release because obviously this DB is about five yards away and this wide receiver closes the distance and throws this move at about three to four yards. Why do that? Why not make the move like maybe about a few yards away from him so he wouldn't get hands and I could just go get up into my route because the spacing would be off on this release. We have to close the distance with this DB to make him uncomfortable and not give him space to react. If this wide receiver, and a lot of wide receivers will make this mistake, they'll come off the line, but they'll throw this move. They'll get this DB to jump, but they still got to go get up to 10 yards. And if you still got to get to 10 yards, this DB, even if you got him to jump, he's got a better angle of recovery. He will be able to recover and close the distance with you. So you have to close the distance with him. Let's try to step on his toes. So when I decide to make that move and I burst up into my route, I can be hip to hip with him. And that way he could trail right behind me and I could work that restack. Now, this wide receiver makes a cardinal mistake. After he does that, he closes the distance grade. He attacks his toes. He threatens him to the inside. He gets his DB to hesitate on that outside foot. But what he does is he stands up after the release. So when you guys throw that move and then you pop your chest up and try to run away from this guy, you take way too wide of an angle. And if this DB would have had just a little bit more active feet, he would have been able to recover because you see how he's taking this like almost like circle pattern. We want to be able to throw this jab to the inside, stay in this low explosive position and drive off of that cut to get right back vertical, to get skinny as they call it, because that will really put this DB trailing your back hip. But again, nonetheless, great job closing the space. Let's play this thing again full speed, and then we'll show an example of restacking. But remember, fellas, first thing that's going to help you out to be a good starter on your team, you got to have that football IQ. You got to know how to run routes. That's a given. But number two, you got to make sure that we close space, not afraid to attack a DB, and we have to be good with my restack. So let's play this route here from Julian Edelman. Same scenario. He's on the five yard line. DB's about four to five yards off inside shade. So he's running like an out route, but you would do the exact same thing if you're running a corner route, like in the last example. So let's play this full speed. So he attacks his leverage, but look when he gets back over the top. He restacks. He stays tight to this DB because that is what can get him trailing his back hip. He gives this move to the inside, but when he gets up vertical, you see how he stays low. He is working to get skinny on this route, so that DB is trailing your back hip. And when I can get to this position, DB trailing my hip, especially when he was inside shade, I got a two-way go. I could give a fake to the outside, run a dig. I could give a fake to the inside, run an out route, depending on whatever that quarterback gave me. So fellas, you have to make sure that when I do that move, when I attack his leverage, I'm closing the distance. I'm not afraid of contact, but I am staying low. I'm almost dipping my shoulder and pushing back up vertical to get this DB trailing my back hip. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Edelman attacking that leverage and then staying low to restack and giving that move to create separation at the top. All right, fellas, so this next example here, the second thing to be that starting wide receiver on your team is you've got to make sure that you have 
balanced with your breaks and you are smooth with your breaks. So we're going to be showing an example of a clip where a wide receiver slips on a route. So to play this full speed, so he's running a comeback route and he ends up slipping, right? So when you end up slipping on a break, that just, you know, it kind of looks a little bit sloppy, right? Like it's, you know, if I'm a college coach or I'm a high school coach and I'm watching a guy and, you know, I'm trying to figure out who my guys are and I see receivers, you know, they, they're doing a good job with the releases. They can run fast. There's fast guys. They're tall guys, but they can't get in and out of breaks. I can't rely on them to run those comeback routes downfield, those digs. They, and that comes solely, fellas, because everybody knows what they want to do. Everybody knows you want to sell vertical, get a DB to open up, but how do we do it? And it comes down to your mechanics. So when this wide receiver makes this break, right, he's going to be snapping down on this inside foot. Numero uno, when you snap down, you have to get what? You have to get low. So what he does when he snaps down, you see how he's very tall. There is no like change in the levels of his pad level. Number one, that is going to make it a little bit harder to change direction. When you are running full speed into a break and it's time to cut on a dime and you want to have that explosive cut, you have to drop your pad level. What I like to say is you want to try to bring your chin to your knee. When you can bring your chin to your knee, that puts you in that low position right now. But now I want you to watch his foot strike right here. He snaps down, but watch the second step. What strikes first? Heel, right? You see how his heel strikes first? Now what's going to happen when your heel hits the grass first? You're probably going to skid, and that is it's going to make you off balance, especially if you are not low enough with your upper half. You have to make sure we get low, fellas, to make that tight change of direction, to make that smooth cut. We have to get low when I snap down. You hear like Nick Saban talk about it a lot. I thought this was a very interesting interview with him. But they asked him like, hey, Alabama's you know, wide receiver you. You got Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, all these great route runners. What do you look for in a recruit? And he answered the question with smoothness in and smoothness out of the break. And that's what I honestly think it comes down to for a lot of guys. They just can't get in and out of their break smooth, whether they're just a big guy or whether they just have very, very stiff hips. But it comes down to the technique, fellas. You have to rep out those little things because those little things are are not little. Those little things matter when it's a one-on-one -on -one rep and you got to win that rep. All right. So now we're going to be looking at a good clip of the proper foot strike and the proper level change from an NFL wide receiver, which is what you should ultimately be shooting for in terms of your technique. So he's pushing vertical. He's going to be running a dig. So like the last one was a comeback route with the DB right on his hip. This is a harder break, if you ask me, because he's got a DB who's inside shade right here, and he's running a dig, and he's got to snap down and slip underneath him. That is incredibly tough to do. And if you don't get low and you drift or you start to skid up field, that DB will recover because you have to make a tight cut on this. So let's play at full speed. So when he comes up into this break, you see how low he gets, and I want you to pay attention to his foot strike. Watch on that trigger step. He's snapping here. Look at the change in levels from his upper half. He's dropping his butt down. He's bringing his chin to his knee. This is what coaches are looking for, fellas. The, to be that wide receiver one on your team, you have to be able to get in and out of breaks. You have to be able to showcase that you can drop on a dime. You can get in and out of breaks smoothly. Because what does it actually mean to be a wide receiver one on your team? That means to be the guy who could run every dang route on the route tree. I could put you on a fade. I could put you on a comeback. I could put you on a post, a slant. I could put you on the easy routes and the hard routes, and I'm confident you could get separation. And it comes from the details, fellas. Now, look at the foot strike on his second and third step. First step, middle arch of the foot. Not on his heels to where he's going to skid forward and lean back not on his tippy toes to where he's going to fall forward middle arch of the foot that weight just shoots down and look where he strikes on the second second step middle arch of the foot that's a powerful position third step middle arch of the foot all of those steps give you balance make sure that you have explosion especially if you are getting low enough with your first initial step so fellas that second thing that's going to make you that starting wide receiver you got to have smoothness in and out of breaks and that comes down from your hip drop you being able to change levels get into a low explosive position and foot placement and foot strike that is what will get you out let's play this thing again full speed one more time great job by mitchell here pushing fade and then being able to get in and out making that tight change of direction on a much harder cut all right so Last thing I want to discuss here is how wide receivers, if you want to be that starting wide receiver on your team, you need to come up to the line with not only a plan, but a reactionary plan. Okay, so I'm going to play this release here from Devontae Adams full speed. So this is a DB who's kind of in like an inch back technique. So what is an inch back technique? Inch back, like we're used to seeing DBs who will play press and they'll just like sit there, right? They just won't move. They'll move like laterally, but they won't start to move back. 
Now, an inch back technique is something with like a like a very patient DB would do if he's maybe expecting, you know, a slant, a vert, trying to get this wide receiver to force it. So he starts inching back, right? That's what the inch back technique is. You need to know that. I'm discussing that first because that helps us understand the release from Adams. So when you come up to the line, right, and you got to run a slant, and like let's say this DB sh- like head up, maybe shaded a little bit to the outside. Naturally, what do you think you would want to do? You would want to maybe give him a quick move, maybe threaten his leverage outside with like a crossover, take the inside release and run your slant, get up to depth, right? Or it could be the same thing for a post or a dig, be the same exact concept. But a lot of stuff can change after the snap because that might be your pre-snap plan to attack him, threaten him outside. But after the snap, what if he jumps to the inside? What if he bails out and press bail? You got to be ready to react. That's why, again, fellas, I think receivers train wrong. I think receivers go out there and they work on all these different releases, all these things, but they never know when to use a different one. They never know when to apply it. That's the problem. That's 90% of it, fellas. You could get all the technique down in the world, but if you don't know when to use it, you're never going to use it. So it's about situational football. So when he comes off the line, Devontae Adams, you see how this guy starts to inch back. Okay, because what do we know from the very first example? To make this DB bite, I have to close the gap. I have to get onto his toes. So he can kind of improvise right here. He comes off the line. He starts to attack him, close the distance, and then he throws the move. But he's not afraid of the contact. He's afraid, he's trying to close space. So when we do get that DB to bite, he has no chance to recover. Imagine if he starts to inch back like so, and Adams gives a move right here. And then he still has to get up to five yards to run his slant. That DB is going to be in a perfect position. Like imagine if that was his only move right there and he still has to get up to five yards. This DB could easily recover. Fellas, got to make sure that you have a reactionary plan. We talk a lot about plans. We talk a lot about script, not so much scripted environments, but that sometimes is how practice can be. You have to be ready for that non-scripted DB reaction. And for every, for every action the DB makes, we have a reaction. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. That's a great job by Adams. That's a great release, great job closing space, and then realizing that that DB is that inch back technique to make a play. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like a full two-week wide receiver route running training schedule, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.